With the advent of the mobile phone in the 1980s, came the need to build a network of antennas to support them. Since then, the telecom companies have erected over 5 million mobile phone masts around the world. But incredibly, prior to filling the air with microwave frequencies, they didn't conduct a single piece of research to ensure there wouldn't be any long-term health effects from such exposure. It's an enormous change in, yeah. in environment on Earth, and it completely swamps all these natural signals, including the Schumann waves that we have evolved with. Twenty-five years ago, it was seen as little more than a gimmick. Today, four billion of his own one. Does the brain react to this exposure? A recent American study shows it absolutely does. The work was carried out by Dr. Nora Valco. Dr. Valco and her team studied 47 healthy people for an entire year. 50 minute exposure to a cell phone was associated with increases in glucose consumption by the brain, which indicates that the brain was being activated by the radio frequencies from the cell phone. This right area of the brain that was very close to the antenna showed the largest increases in metabolism as compared when the telephones were off. Dr. Valco's experiment showed that the human brain has a metabolic reaction to the presence of microwaves from a mobile phone, a metabolic reaction at levels well below the legal limit. I would hold my cell phone here and the tumor was right there. I always held it on my right side, right here. The industry should have put these warnings on these phones a long time ago. Studies like Professor Leshinsky is now allow top neurosurgeons to issue a stark cell phone warning. It's essentially cooking the brain. Clinical studies find young men who keep phones in their pockets have much lower chances of producing offspring, while women often store them on their chest. I would just tuck it right in to my bra. Tiffany France got breast cancer aged just 21, right where since childhood she stored her phone. These spots mark the areas of Donna James's cancer. Her doctors call this a new breed of distribution that exactly matches where women keep their phone. Multiple small cancers were confined to the upper inner aspect of, of the breast. So I found um, a study from 2008. It's called Mercury Release from Dental Amalgam Restorations after magnetic resonance imaging and following mobile phone use. It found that people who use mobile phones have an accelerated release of mercury from their dental fillings. I had heart racing, headaches. Nauseous. It's a really weird feeling. Does it happen on the weekends? No. So we went with this man, industry tester Kavinder Dillon, to measure the radiation levels in a typical wireless classroom. 113.8 microwatts. People who are actually in the industry who are testing this, they, they, f they feel this is a high limit. This is, this is very high. Really? Yeah. You heard him. Our industry tester calls that level high, but it's still well within Canada's safety guideline. Now, that guideline is a thing called Safety Code 6. It sets the limit for radio frequency radiation exposure, and Health Canada says there's no way the levels we found are causing those headaches and heart palpitations. And Beth Peterson of Health Canada says the science backs it up. There's no evidence, scientific evidence, that those kind of effects are caused by the energy um, limits that kids are exposed to by Wi-Fi. Health Canada sets the limit at 10 million microwatts per meter squared. Now, that might not mean much to most of us, but in 2008, Toronto's Board of Health said it's way too high and asked Canada's Minister of Health in this letter for much stricter regulations, 100 times more strict. Health Canada never changed a thing. Still, no matter what any guideline says, these parents say they've seen it for themselves and Wi-Fi is harming their kids. Our safety limits are set on, we use a weight of evidence approach. So there are thousands of articles, thousands of peer-reviewed scientific articles on the issue. 16 by 9 wanted to take a look at that evidence, so we asked Health Canada for its science. They sent us this, a list of 16 studies entitled Specific to Wi-Fi. So we did our own homework going through every study, and not a single one looks at whether Wi-Fi in schools poses a health risk to students. The radio frequency meter, it is measuring the transmission of the wireless coming out of this modem. And you can see that the peak signal strength on the left on the left column of this meter is at almost six volts per meter. That's as high as it goes. 
and on the right hand side the microwatts per square meter in terms of average is sometimes peaking up at 10,000. These are extremely dangerous readings. You can still see that the whole house is more or less being influenced by this radio frequency transmission. Five of us all, all diagnosed at once, um, within six months of each other, with breast cancer. There were only 18 houses in the village surrounding the foam mast, so Eileen decided to conduct a survey to see if anybody else had suddenly started suffering ill health. What came back really frightened us. We, lots of people were reporting the same symptoms that I've been suffering with for years. So the the vertigo. Yeah, the headaches, headaches, the vertigo. But there was other young women in the village who were having fertility problems and precancer cervical cells. We'd done a count of 77 people in the houses. And out of 77 um, people, how many people the, were suffering the, biological effects? The, uh, the estimate was um, around 70%. 70% of people who'd had effects over the years with biological effects, sleep problems, skin rashes, benign lumps, lumps or cancer. You know, melatonin is a hormone, and believe it or not, it's made in the brain. And it secretes only at night. And it's at night that we need it because that's when we go to sleep and when our brain repairs the cells of our body. The hypothesis that the pineal gland cannot distinguish between light frequencies and man-made frequencies is certainly backed up by a wealth of research. In 2011, the World Health Organization changed the danger rating of mobile phones, reclassing it as possibly carcinogenic to humans, based on an increased risk of contracting a geloma, the type of brain tumor associated with using a mobile phone. What was the catalyst for this abrupt change in status? There have been countless studies conducted into the possible health effects of mobile phones. But the most conclusive came from Leonard Hardell. He has overseen the largest and most comprehensive piece of research ever conducted, combining his own work with that of others from around the world. From the early 1990s, they have investigated the phone habits of more than 2,000 people from around the world. People with tumors such as astrocytoma and acoustic neuroma the brain tumors associated most with mobile phone use due to their proximity to the ear. Their findings are shocking. They concluded that mobile phone use does increase the risk of a brain tumor. Wargaming reveals this leaked Motorola email is industry paid studies purely for reassuring the public. We invited the powerful industry lobby CTIA to discuss the issues raised in this report. They sent this one line refusal. Thank you for contacting us, but we will not be able to do this interview. The industry's most respected journalist is Dr. Louis Lessin, editor of Microwave News since 1981. Louis, great to speak to you. There seems to be a parallel universe, what the industry says and everyone else. The whole system is broken. People are not being told the truth. Who is it that sets the standards? Um, a group of um, people called, uh, from a committee called ICNERP. The people who do the work on mobile phones are, by and large, engineers. They have no idea what is going on inside the living cell, but they are pontificating. Uh, on this, they make the assumption that the only thing that can affect um, the well-being of a living organism is if it is powerful enough to heat the tissue. In 1996, my colleague Om Gandhi of the University of Utah was chairman of the Department of Electrical Engineering and president of the Bioelectromagnetic Society. And he published these findings, which is a scalar two-dimensional model showing the relative amount of radiation in the large head and the smallest head. He lost all his funding for research from Motorola when he published it. The MTHR program is funded jointly by the UK government and the mobile telecommunications industry and it funds research into possible adverse health effects related to mobile phone technology. Well, of course, there is a, a, a potential conflict of interest, and that's why a, a program of funding like this has to be carefully managed. Class action lawsuits filed against cell phone manufacturers. Coming up. Here is the 10K report from Verizon. It says, we are subject to a significant amount of litigation, which could require us to pay 
significant damages or settlements. AT&T, unfavorable litigation or governmental investigation results could require us to pay significant amounts. This is China Mobile. We cannot be certain that future studies will not impute a link between electromagnetic fields and adverse health effects. There is a legal responsibility of these corporations to report to the Securities and Exchange Commission that they face risks because there may be risks associated with their products and their services. A sting has exposed how easy it is to get phony studies in print. Posing as a serious scientist, John Bohannon sent in a paper full of schoolboy errors, offering payment for publication. Incredibly, more than half the journals in these countries all around the world published it, even lying to the public that the study had been peer-reviewed. When you acknowledge you have a problem and you're a government agency, you have to do something about it. This is the Canadian health authorities. This is what they say. Limit the length of cell phone calls. Replace cell phone calls with text. And encourage children under the age of 18 to limit their cell phone usage. This is the National Government of Canada. Health Canada says there's no risk from the radiation it emits. That's just simply not true. That's simply not true. Dr. David Carpenter is a world-renowned expert in environmental toxins in Albany, New York. And he says the Canadian government is just plain wrong. What we do is look at the weight of the evidence. But that's what they said they did. They didn't. Obama just made industry chief lobbyist Thomas Wheeler head of the regulator itself, the FCC. Actions being taken outside the US. France is moving schools back from Wi-Fi to cabled internet. Countries from Germany to Israel and Finland are moving to stop cell phone sales to kids. Canada's government might not be doing anything about concerns, but in France, the town of Aeroville St. Clair is. It's the first municipality in the world to remove Wi-Fi from schools and public buildings. Keep it off your body and ideally put it on uh, a table, a chair, some type of platform where you're not holding it and keep your body about a foot away from that with the speakerphone on. The other option, of course, is you can use Bluetooth headsets. And while that's better than holding it here, st you still transmit the radiations. It's not as powerful, but it's clearly there and it's really in your ear, so it's very close to your skull and it may be just as bad. So I would not advise the use of Bluetooth headsets. But if you want to take it to the next level up, what seems to be better is to not use a wired headset, but to use a headset that has a, uh, an, a, a, a essentially a tube in it that uh, is, is, uh, serves as an, an ex under an acoustic exchange principle. This is an example of one of them, the so-called a blue tube. So I go up here, I turn it off, I save it, the wireless modem is disabled. Plug your wireless modem into an ethernet cord, plug the ethernet cord into your computer. You just use the old fashioned wires ethernet. Um, each cable costs about two quid, um, it's more secure and it's faster. So, um, yes, you've got the disadvantage of wires everywhere, but it's, uh, it still works terribly well.